Great. So, um, hi, Joanne. Um, I was wondering if you would like to introduce yourself and then tell us about yourself, your role, and then your extent of involvement in knowledge mobilization. OK, great. Hi, Roxanne. So I'm Joanne Norton. I'm a Library and Knowledge Services Development Manager based in the northeast, part of a northern team working for Health Education England. Um, so my role is largely around um, quality improvement and development of library and knowledge services as part of a national team. Um, so we're interested in developing library and knowledge, knowledge specialists so that they can develop their specialist skills, quality assuring services. Um, and another key part of my role is around advocacy. So that's promoting the role of the library knowledge specialist and um, so ensuring that organisations understand um, the specialist skills that they have available and make best use of them. So I've used some KM tools to try to build those relationships between library and knowledge specialists and um, healthcare decision makers. Oh, that's fab. Um, so did you want to tell us a little bit more about some of those knowledge mobilisation activities that you've you've tried or been involved in? Yeah, so so more recently, I think um, I've been involved um, in setting up a group called STEM Club. Um, so that is a group of people who work broadly in kind of evidence roles, so have an interest in promoting evidence based practice mm -hmm. and people from a wide range of different backgrounds. Um, and we've brought brought people together in this group. STEM Club stands, stands for System Transformation Through Evidence Mobilization. We called it a club because we wanted it to be very um, to be very informal. There's no governance around the group. It's a voluntary group and it's people coming together around an interest. Um, so we've got people from uh, library knowledge backgrounds, research backgrounds, public health and commissioning. And we've organized a range of kind of development events Okay. Um, and at those events, we invite healthcare management decision makers to come along as well and give us their perspective, their kind of real world perspective on, on what it's like to try and practice in an evidence based way within the NHS. Um, and we've we've really focused on trying to build relationships between evidence specialists and decision makers to bring together those different sets of skills. Um, and we've we've sort of used different techniques, KM techniques to do that. That sounds incredible. <laughs> uh -huh. um, Thank you. Can I just quickly ask, are they virtual now? We are in the process of arranging our first virtual one um, and we're just trying to focus on a theme. That That's okay. one of the most difficult things about it. I think Roxanne is to, to choose what your theme is going to be. Yeah. Um, so there are so many potential themes now um, that that's where we're focusing in. We don't know whether to look at things like digital inclusion and um, in terms of the wider patient and public perspective or whether we focus purely on um, more kind of evidence based approaches to the pandemic. So, yes, we will be doing that, but we're not quite there yet. Oh, great. OK, um, so how did you get started with the knowledge mobilization work? Yeah, so it started simply through um, a couple of people that I met through my induction when I started in this role. And yep. um, so went to visit a few people who worked in, in different areas. So somebody who worked in the commission and support unit um, and somebody who worked with Public Health England. And we were just having conversations really about um, how we get evidence into practice. One, one of the people that I spoke to had just recently written a paper about how um, just providing kind of push current awareness doesn't in fact result in a change in practice. Mm -hmm. And we all, all the people that I spoke to, um, we all had this view that it was all about building relationships and that's how you would change practice by building trust and relationships between those who kind of provide access to the evidence and those who make the decisions. So that's where we started to grow and develop the group. Um, and then we started to try and make some links into um, into kind of system wide pieces of work. So at the time there was um, the development of a regional frailty framework that was happening. So we got one of the library knowledge specialists connected into that piece of work so that we then 
and um, we're building relationships and also that librarians were able to provide that evidence base behind the decision making so so that's how it started very small and piecemeal developed um, a few of these events and it's just kind of carried on from there really oh, that's great um <clears throat> so that sounds like it's you know been really successful and, and it's achieving what you were kind of setting out to achieve but um is there anything you've tried that that hasn't worked and and you know what is, what has that taught you for future work yeah there's a couple of things i would say there roxanne firstly in terms of the development events and um, the way we branded them was really important so we had an idea for a session around um what happens when um, you start to see evidence against um, a process or a pathway that you have in place. So, for instance, you want to look at maybe decommissioning a, a pathway. Um, how do you go about that? Um, what are the processes? So we started by calling it um, decommissioning. Um, we used that in the, in the title for the event and we had very little take up. When we sort of got together and started to view it from um, the perspective of a range of different stakeholders we changed the wording slightly and called it dilemmas in decision making mm. and then it attracted a lot more interest so so small things like how you brand an event like that can can have a big impact on take up so yeah. that's that's one thing we learned from um and we we had to cancel an event um that time and and, and as i say just take some time to rebrand um another thing is that you just need to continually invest in the group to keep it going um, so we, you just asked there about a virtual event and we, we haven't run anything through the pandemic, other pressures have, have gotten the way um, and it does take someone to have some really dedicated time to keep, keep the momentum going, that, that's an important piece of learning for us I think. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, um, you know, what about um, you know, what would you say is, is the greatest knowledge management challenge that you face um, at your organisation or, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think, so working for Health Education England, obviously yeah. we have a huge geographical spread, so we're, we're all in disparate places. Um, we're also, part of our role um, is to kind of stay one step ahead of the system mm -hmm. in a way so that we're planning for the future all the time. So we need regular and good quality horizon scanning and um, we need to be able to to set the tone and also judge the tone in the healthcare system so you need that um forward view all the time so that that's a huge challenge and that is is really met by our km team our internal km team within health education england to provide very regular and targeted current awareness um, so so we rely quite heavily on them for that so, for instance, we've we've been developing a piece of work around health literacy mm -hmm. um, and we're forward planning training now over the next couple of years. Um, and the KM team within our organisation did an extensive literature search for us and that's that's helped to inform our strategic planning, our training um, and all of our thinking for the next couple of years. So having that that um, skill within the team is really invaluable. Mm. Absolutely. <clears throat> and um, may I ask also, you know, what difference does knowledge management make to your organisation? You know, you've obviously touched on it on it there. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, so our strategic objectives in Health Education England are all about workforce, current workforce and future workforce, mm -hmm. and also about patient safety and quality. So, um, so having having the um, the ability to stay ahead, stay abreast of developments, yeah, yeah. Um, and also to connect with others who are in related fields of work. So um, things like randomised coffee trials have been really helpful as well, um, just so that you can connect with other people in related um, fields or even unrelated fields. And and that's the sort of the face to face thing that we've lost from being in our offices and just meeting people in an incidental way. So having those set up in a more formal way through the coffee trials is, is really helpful. Um, and, you know, it's really coming through from, from your speaking that you really enjoy what you do. Um, but what do you enjoy most about what you do? Or um, if you'd like, um, what's your proudest knowledge management moment? 
Yeah, so um, I think this sort of the two things are very connected really for me. So it's the it's all about that building of relationships and um, seeing people in a room together from de very different backgrounds, sharing and, and 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 seeing the success of that is probably um, my proudest moment, I think. Um, yes, and just, just, we did a session, a kind of speed dating session in a STEM club session where you just went up to someone you didn't know and had a conversation with them for a few minutes, told them about what you do. And just seeing the kind of the buzz that's created by that and also the um the sense from people that this was something that was really important to them and they um that they wanted to kind of progress with it and they saw it as a bit of a movement really a kind of bottom-up movement mm -hmm. and so that was that was really important mm -hmm. important moment for me amazing um and just Finally, um, what key recommendations would you give to someone else starting out um, or introducing knowledge management or knowledge mobilization? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think first, the first thing um, is to take small steps. Um, first of all, to, not to try and start something with a big bang. And, and I have learned from experience with that that that, that can be. Um, yeah, not ideal, I guess, to, to try with a big bang approach. Uh, my suggestion would be to start small and, and do things incrementally. Um, think about the people you can work with. Take any opportunity to meet someone new, even if you can't immediately see what the connection is. Just take those opportunities and try to always keep, keep in mind how this links to your own organisational objectives and your library and knowledge sorry, objectives as well. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Thanks, Joanne. Well, it, um, it, unless there's anything else you wanted to share. Um, no, I think that's it. You. Thanks, Roxanne. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you.